Thank you for joining us today for the Notable Kitchen Tour and Chef's Tastings presented by the Mainline Committee for the Philadelphia Orchestra. This is the 11th year of the Kitchen Tour and I am happy to say that as a floral designer for Studio Flora, this is my fourth year and we're very excited to be bringing it to you virtually this year. Today, we are gonna to talk to you about choosing the proper floral design for your tablescape. Um, we're going to focus a little bit on a few elements that you can be thinking about as you decide on the florals for your table. And then I'm going to spend a few minutes putting together a table centerpiece for you. Um, so when my clients come to me and ask me about their event and to help them put together a floral design for their event, I have a few key questions that I ask them. It helps me think through what I'm going to do for them and it helps them think through their overall vision for their table. Um, the first element I ask them about is very basic. What is the shape and size of your table? Are we talking about a round table, an oval table, rectangular table? Um, and then also what is the size of your table? That will dictate basically the size of the arrangement we're going to do and even the shape and the container that we're going to use. Uh, the second thing I normally ask them about is, is there any specific theme for your dinner? Um, and are there any specific colors you're going to be using for your table linens or even for elements on your table? And are there any flowers that you either have a strong preference for or that you absolutely don't want to use? Is there you know, anything in terms of color uh, and type of flower? Some people don't like flowers with fragrance, so there's often little things that they may not have thought through until we have this discussion. Um, the third piece is really the complexity of your tablescape. Are you having, when you look at your overall table, are there a lot of different elements on your table, lots of different decor, um, or are you looking at a simple table uh, with you know, just your, your dishes and your glassware, your flatware, and maybe some colored napkins or um, not a lot of you know, little decor pieces throughout the table. The table we're designing for today is actually a, one of the more complex table tablescapes. Um, and so, which means that there's lots of different elements on the table. So we're going to go with a simple centerpiece because we don't want the flowers to compete with the beautiful tablescape. Uh, we really just want them to complement. So we're choosing a simple palette of whites with some yellows and we are matching them up with these dishes that we have here. Um, we're going to be using this set of dishes uh, and then the table designer has put together a beautiful assortment of different types of seasonal items, decor items that are going to complement the dishes. Um, we originally thought we were going to use this container here because it matches the dishes, uh, but we actually decided to go in a different direction because of one of the beautiful small elements that are on the table, we decided to choose a container that uh, was the same color as that element to, to bring out a little bit more yellow in her tablescape. So we're actually going to go with this piece over here, um, which is a beautiful bowl with a plate that goes with it. So we're actually using the lid for the bowl as one of the elements on the table, uh, to again, to bring out the yellow. And then we are going to design in this bowl here. Um, so we've got an oval bowl because the table that it's going on is an oval table. And I have already taken the liberty of putting to the greens into the bowl. So I'm going to move this over here. Um, and we're just gonna put that right in. And so this is sort of an oblong shape because we want it to be consistent with the oval in the platter. Um, and we've chosen, again, some very simple greenery. We're using lemon leaf, seeded eucalyptus, and grevillea, which has a, a double-sided leaf similar to a magnolia. So it adds a little bit of natural color and texture to the arrangement um, before we even get started with the flowers. So we've chosen a white palette for the flowers um, and we're using with, with little touches of yellow. And as we go through, I'll tell you which flowers it is we're going to be using. So we're gonna start out by adding our white lisianthus. Um, so I've already cut it so that we're prepared. 
And so with the lisianthus, we're just gonna put it around. So it's just little tucks of white here and there. And the way I do that is I usually do it in a very symmetrical way. So I start on one side and then I go to the opposite side and then I put some over here and then I go over here and then I'll add some to the top like that and some over on this side and then some over here and there and then I'll go down the top. Every designer has sort of a different thing that makes sense to them when they're putting it together. And you'll find your very own as well. I like to use, to design, I love to use a Lazy Susan um, because it enables me to turn the arrangement as I'm working on it to make sure that I'm getting any holes, filling in any kind of pieces and parts that need to be filled in. So there's our Lysianthus, beautiful. Um, and then the next thing we're going to do is I decided to use some of these white cabbages. Um, which is just a beautiful white cabbage in the center with green around. And one handy thing I love to do with the cabbages, which is sort of a, a different way to use them, is I like to pull the leaves down like this um, to kind of open it up a little bit so it looks more like a flower. Or so you see the flower, I should say. So see, it's... Grab my clippers, and then I'm going to put these around the center of the arrangement. So, put one there. Over here, again, just kind of put them opposite of each other. We're gonna go in the middle. Four of these. Typically, I'm an odd number person, um, but every once in a while, something calls for even. And the cabbages are big, so it's a nice thing to be able to have. So see how we're we're doing here. Um, the next thing we're going to add in is, I think I'm going to use some of these beautiful chrysanthemums. Again, a flower I don't typically use, but since we're going with a very simple palette. Um, we thought that this is not only a beautiful, simple white flower, but it's one that is readily available. Uh, this table that we're putting together is a, an autumn tablescape, so we're trying to use flowers that we know that people will be able to get. Um, and chrysanthemums are plentiful at this time of year, as well as the cabbages and the lisianthus. Well, this one is actually beautiful. It's got a green center. One more. Okay. All right, so next I'm going to tap into my beautiful white roses, um, which I've already pre-cut for you. But I'm going to again add them here or there. So, so since we're using such a simple palette of all white, I like to add a little bit of texture to the arrangement by using lots of different white flowers, different varieties. So that's what we're doing here. It just makes it very crisp and clean and soft. about five to ten roses and sometimes I like to cluster the roses 
Actually, it looks very pretty to have a little cluster of them together. Um, okay, and so the next one I'm going to use are Hypericum berries, and this is where we're sort of pulling in our yellow. Hypericum are interesting in that they start out white, um, but then they slowly, or at least this particular variety starts out white, but then slowly turns yellow. So uh, I'm using it at the more yellow stage to kind of pull in a little bit of color there, some of that yellow color that we're looking for, which is actually going to line up with a beautiful ceramic pumpkin that's being used on the table, which is a very soft yellow. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, and so this is going to complement that. few more pieces. There we go. I'll put one here. You just want to sprinkle the hypericum throughout. Right, and then finally the last element that I added to the centerpiece are Crocosmia pods. Now these are very fun. Um, many people in this area have these actually in their garden. They grow a beautiful red flower in the springtime. Uh, and then they have this beautiful pod that comes towards the end of the season. And I always tell people, if you cut them when you see the pods then and put them in water, then you'll be able to use them throughout the fall as long as you maintain the water. Keep Change it every week or so or every just check on it and keep it in a cool spot, even if you kept it in your garage. They last forever. Well, not forever, but they last for a long time. And they are just very interesting and they add an airiness to your arrangement that um, it's just a little bit of flair. And I just kind of put them around and make them so that they're sort of sticking out. I like things very airy and light um, and also a little wild. Um, but you can adjust to your own particular taste. If you're someone who likes things that are neat and tidy when it comes to your flowers, you can easily adjust any of these elements to your taste. Okay, 